if you're in a conversation virtually or face to face and you lean to discomfort, say to the person, I'm going to lean to discomfort, which means I'm going to do something harder than usual. I'm going to do something that I'm taking a risk because it's an invitation for the other person to join you. It's an invitation for the other person to create some safe space and to know that what you're going to do is not easy for you. Maybe easy if they were doing it, but for you doing it, it's not easy. And you want them to almost have a contract with you that we are now in a process where I'm taking risk and I need you to partner with me in creating a safe space and listen to me as an ally as I'm taking this risk. And also at times people will say, I need you to listen as an ally. Because often people are moving so fast and so quickly they're hardly listening to one another. But there are times when I, you may have a situation where I really need somebody to slow down and really listen to me as an ally. Hear me fully, don't be distracted. Be with me as I'm talking about this so I can feel your support, but also that you can fully understand what I'm saying so that you can see and we can see where it goes from there. So saying I'm gonna listen as an ally is a very, very helpful thing in this world where people are distracted and half listening much of the time. The third key is really to state your intent and your intensity. Often in organizations, when a leader speaks, there's a belief that whatever the leader says is what you should do, that it's a go-do. That a leader would not be speaking if they're not giving you a, a task as a result of what they're saying. So we were working with a senior leader in an organization who was very creative and very innovative. And he would come out of his office, and as soon as he came out of his office and saw his people that worked for him, he would give them ideas. He would say, did you try this? Have you talked to somebody in Japan about this? I'm not sure the color should be blue, maybe it should be green. Have you thought about this on that project and that on that project? And then he would go and have a coffee. Meanwhile, all of the people he just spoke to said, oh, the boss just suggested I should do this. Let me go ahead and do that. Let me start pursuing that as part of the project. So when I met with him, I said, you know, Bob, you know, people love you as a leader, but they're, what they don't like is every time they meet with you, you change their projects. And he said, no, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I said, well, when you come out of your office, you say da 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 He says, I do that, but I don't mean they really have to change it. I'm just giving them ideas. And I realized that he was really not wanting them to change it. He wanted them to have something else that they could add to their thinking if it made sense. If it did not make sense, then don't add it. But there was no language for that. There was no currency around that. And so often leaders would say something. I had another leader who was a, a president of a, a university, a new president, and she had a beautiful rose garden with all different colored roses. And she had a gardener and she said to the gardener, I really like yellow roses. The next season, all she had was yellow roses. So there's example, example, example of, of leaders making a comment or making a statement and people taking it as go-do's and going out and just implementing what the leader said, sometimes checking, sometimes not checking, but the leader may not have thought about that. One of our favorite examples is uh, a group of people walking through a manufacturing facility. And in that manufacturing facility, a senior leader who's walking through on a tour, everything's you know cleaned up, nice, painted and everything, just says, I wonder how many valves there are in this plant, as he was looking at all the valves. And so he just kept walking. That night, a team stayed up all night counting the vows. Because the belief was if the leader asked for that, we should go ahead and do it. So I started thinking about what happened with Bob, what happened with that president, what happened with that leader walking through the plant, and said, we gotta come up with some language so that your intent and your intensity is clear. Because if not, it's always assumed that whatever the leader says, an idea, it is to be implemented. So I came up with this, these thoughts about how do we differentiate when something is just a bathroom shower thought, when something's a thought going down the street or going up the escalator or the elevator, and when something is more uh, intended to be something you take action in. So I came up with the concept of a notion. A notion is when you just have an idle thought that you may or may not be wedded to, and you would share with somebody, and if they think it's important enough to add to what they're doing, they can pursue it. But if they don't think it's important, they can just drop it. Then a stake, a stake like you stake into the ground, you knock into the ground. That it's like when you put up a tent uh, and, and when you're out camping. And you know when you put that tent up, you're eventually gonna take that tent down. You're not gonna live there the rest of your life. You're just there as part of a transition. 
So it's putting a stake in the ground. What's that position that you have? But you're willing to move it. You're willing to move that to another position as you get wiser, as you get more information, as people talk with you. So that's just saying, here's my initial position on something, but I am willing to move it given conversation. Then there's a boulder. So there's a big boulder that I have. So a position of boulder is when I'm not gonna be easily moved on this. I feel pretty strongly about this. And so this is a boulder that I have on this position. And then there's a tombstone. Tombstone means basically it's not moving, my final resting place, how I see things. I it, This is a decision that I have made. And so we're asking leaders to really think about when you say something, is it a notion of stake, a boulder or a tombstone? If it's a notion, people can push back on it, they can move it around, they can you know ignore it. Or is it a stake where it's a position that you hold and people are gonna have to help you know, give you information, but you're willing to move it so people know that you're available to make it different and take a different position. So you're open. So it's letting people know you're open to something. Is it a boulder, which is like really something that you feel pretty strongly about? I always say if somebody has a boulder, then you need to bring friends to get them to move the boulder, or you need to give them more data. But just one person coming and saying, well, I see it differently is not going to move a boulder. A boulder is going to need a village to help move that boulder. And then it's a tombstone. In many cases with tombstones, then these are things that are edicts that maybe come out of a headquarters organization or something that the leader feels very strong about. A lot of times it's a value statement or a core belief of the organization. That's a tombstone that's not gonna change. And then that case, arguing about it and having a discussion about it doesn't really make sense. That really what you wanna do, you might have influence on how you implement it, but whether you implement it or not, is, is not an area for discussion. So that's what we've been seeing, that's what we've been practicing, and we've used those terms, and we have people using those terms all over the globe. And it's helping a lot in, in speeding up conversation and getting rid of some of the misconceptions people have about what people's intent is and how much, how serious they are about moving forward on that.